outside of the city. We'll go to Vatapol. Mm -hmm. Oh, Akka's already on. English, draconic. Um, so I could speak to the uh, dragon. Ashoka and Akka, you're going outside the city. Okay, you pass by the Slayer's Manor, and you pass by a tattoo shop. Ooh. <laughs> Did they go, hmm? <laughs> you gonna poke your head in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, um... Let me grab her token. She is where? Hiding in the darkness. Give me a second. I've got two versions of map tool. The DM version where I can see everything, and then the player version which I show the stream and the other players. Uh, her name is what? And where? Is she on here? She should be. Okay, roll a d3. Okay. One is Nitzer, two is Chanticleer, three is Brog. Nitzer. Okay, I'm going back to the Vatapol map, and I'm going to copy uh, some tokens there. All right, you can see a guy waiting inside the shop. There are a bunch of very heavily tattooed, thin-looking people. They do not look like they're trying to fit in with Imperial life. Like, people that are into, like... Ritualistic scarring, tattooing, weird, weird jewelry, um, blacks and blacks and red clothing, weird hairstyles, the perfect sort of an underclass punkish tribal looking type individuals. <laughs> um, you do see this really creepy guy sitting there, just sort of, just sort of meditating off to the side. It looks like he's waiting for something, and you can see a woman is. Um, uh, a bunch of these servants or employees come up and seem to give great difference to this heavily tattooed elven woman. <clears throat> her, her, her eyes glance towards the doorway as you're standing there with Akka. Akka is just staring at the, the, the wonders and delights of the, of, the, uh, of the tattoos everywhere. He says a word. Do you, do you know how to speak his language I, sp I speak Akka. Okay, he says, <laughs> Witch doctors. Yes. Would you like a fresh marking? He nods. Okay. We're gonna get Akka a tattoo. Um, Somebody says, may I help you? Is this little guy with a flippy haircut. He's got, like, so many studs in his face that, that one side looks almost completely metallic. Can I help you? I require some body art for my god. Wait there. So you managed to sit in the same area where this man is meditating. You can roll a knowledge religion if you want to know what god he worships. Gods are those things that you use to manipulate people, right? <laughs> yep. The, the, the... Yeah, in check then. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, in check, I can do <laughs> fifteen. Uh, it is an old god of death. Is basically what you what you're getting what you're getting at. This this man looks like he's um, more of a wiry, healthy sort. Not an inch of body fat on him. He's head to toe covered in tattoos. Some of them, some of the tattoos are actually moving. And you notice, like, little hand prints, like little bony hand prints every once in a while, trying to, like, push their way out of his ribcage. Hmm. He's, he's, he's just sitting in the waiting area. He's got his, he's like, his legs folded up sort of in a, um, in a meditative uh, pose. And he is... Um, not paying attention to you. I will stare at... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're now staring. Uh, mm. Give me a spellcraft. All right. Poikies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 20. 
Uh, he, he, the tattoos in his chest are necromantic. Of some sort. His skin is somewhat bruised, and you can see that the necromancy uh, is giving telltale signs that mixing with the living is not a good thing. You're a new customer, says a woman that approaches. She's covered in tattoos head to toe. She is elven, although there's something wrong with this elf. It looks like she's wearing like little bird and monkey and um, um, like a little dog skull. Kind of on her woven or like tied to her clothing. Yes, I am Ashoka. I am one of the masters of the Conclave of the Crimson Scales. The who? One of the new stables in town. Ah. Uh, First norm- season and all that. Normally I don't visit or care too much about new stables. They tend not to last past their first season. They also don't have enough money to afford my delicate touch. I see that you were admiring Nitzer Cray's work. Yes. Some moderately powerful necromancy woven into the skin, as well as superior artistic craftsmanship. Give him what he wants off the first shelf. And you notice that several servants come over with this big book. Some of the pages have simple drawings on them, but some of them actually have, like, stolen skin with the tattoos still on them in the pages, and they're showing like, showing Akka basically a book of possible tattoos. <laughs> cool. Um, I will speak to you in my private chambers for a moment. <clears throat> okay. She pulls, you off, she pulls you off to the side. Yep. <clears throat> Conclave of the Crimson Scale. Yes. I do work with your master, Von Krakenstein. It smiles. He, he told me that a new Ludus would be set up. I understand that his money sponsors it. Odd. The tattoo that you were admiring. This is his sponsored work as well. Your master has an eye for talent. I am currently working on three mercenaries of his devising. An expensive sort for a starting ludus. We were looking for some simple markings, getting the lay of the land. How powerful of an enchantment can you place upon the skin? Powerful enough. You will find no flesh painter more powerful here in this side of the Imperium. I would rival those of the Imperial capital, I'm sure. I'm sure. I hear that you have an apprentice, Phineas, I believe his name is. Yes. He is young. We'll see if you please your master. I'm sure that your master can afford my training rates. Of course, if your ludus fails, if he's any good, I may have a job opening. That is to be seen. I'm certain we'll be seeing much of each other in the future. Yes. Give me... uh, Ashoka has been very polite. Give me a diplomacy check. Uh, Yes. I'm saving my roll twice for... For the dick face. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, 33. All right. So 
Do you have someone that knows the secret connection or the, or the semi-secret connection between Krakenstein and you? Mm-hmm. And she was actually told to expect you. All right, so we've got Vestra Urhal, tattooist. Vestra Urhal, tattooist at the Skin Painters. Nose crack and steam. All right, and then I can infer onto that that Nitzer is one of the uh, uh, is a mercenary for Krakenstein. Uh, yes, Nitzer is one of the mercenaries that have agreed to work with your master. The other one is Brog, hmm. and the third is an Afrit whose family chafes under the imperial laws for religion. His name is Chanticleer. He will burn your enemies for you. Brog will eat them. <clears throat> uh, kind kind of smiles, a, a broad, creepy smile. Brog is you a different You wouldn't happen to know if they're on the market, would you? You would have to talk to them. I know that they've been paid well by your master to have me paint upon their skin and to weave items into their flesh. Hmm. Brog, I don't think, knows what we've done to him. Nitza is still getting used to his. And I'm still working on Chanticleer. Very difficult to paint upon flesh with fire when the when the flesh itself is resistant. Is there we're, not, any... we're not doing work on him here. Is there any sort of candle or torch in this room? Sure. Okay, Ashoka puts his hand in it. He's resistant to fire, just as like a... <laughs> Would you willing to be a test subject? Well, it depends on what the experiment is. Come back if you're in need of coin. I have a dozen different inks that I would like to try upon flesh before trying upon the finished product. I'm certain I can find volunteers for such work. She smiles at that. It's more like like a, a pursing curl of her lip. She does not look like a happy elf. That's all right. <clears throat> Give me a perception check. All right. Uh, perception. 29. You notice displayed. Um, there's a bunch of, like, witch junk, like, drying out bats and... You know, yeah. Um, Newt's eye and Newt's eye and, and, and jars of all sorts of stuff. And there's this really grand table that looks like it's it's full of different colored, multicolored inks, like all like the rainbow all the way to dark and reds all the way into um, into things that look like blood. And um, you see that there's this official looking document that is framed. <laughs> And it's got writing in High Imperial and in, in, in Imperial Common in it with a big stamp in the center of it. Okay. So she's like registered tattooist. You could read it if you want. <clears throat> uh, yes, I, I, I speak, I read all those languages. Okay. It says um, that she's registered with the Imperial Ministry of Arcana and that... Um, that she is under a travel restriction limiting her to the Duchy of Vade. And that she's allowed to practice her quote-unquote witchcraft within the confines of her registered business. If you're ever in need of 
services extending beyond the limits of Vade, we might be able to set something up. Although I assume you have these sorts of connections. Why would I ever want to do business outside of Vatapol? She seems to like totally be completely shut to this type of conversation at this point in time. Okay. She, she just met you. Yep. <clears throat> and on that note, the uh, conversation ends. She's not angry or anything. She's just yep. like... Well, also, I... Uh... The power. When I fuck up a diplomacy, their attitude remains unchanged instead of decreasing. <laughs> yep. The 33 um, was, yeah, yeah she, had per she was perfectly fine to have, like, really civil conversation yep. with you. Everything's good, but yep. now you, you push something too far. I, I said a thing. <clears throat> All right. I, I, saw, I saw a thing. All right, we're going to uh, go. You uh, saw a thing, and uh, you pushed a button. I pushed a button. It's like, yeah, it's a source spot. Hey, look at the source spot. All right. That's all right. Okay. okay. If you do not mind, I am busy. Of course. Humans, they work at such a frenetic pace. Always scurrying their short little lives away. Akka, you see, is getting a tattoo. Perfect. Uh, and it's a tattoo of a snake that is encircling his gladiator brand. Yes. Snake man! <laughs> Aka Yaku. <laughs> You've got your second level toady. Congratulations. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Mitzer Cray eventually it, like, just wanders off. He glanced at both of you. like he, He's like looking straight through each of you. Like you were yep. not a concern of his. And you, do, you do notice that um, uh, Avestra Aral goes into a back room. Some heavy curtains are pulled. And you can hear a low muffling conversation between the two of them. All right. Kind of like, and how are you feeling today? You know, that sort of thing. And yep. he said something, he muttered something low. Well, let's have a look. You know, like that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how much does uh, Akka's tattoo cost? Um, three gold pieces. Okay. It's not a terribly... That's fine. Brilliant. Gold. Like... Uh, all right. But compared to like what a mercenary would make at a silver piece per day, that's a significant oh, cost, right? Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, it's <clears throat> yes, it's well, three gold pieces turned is like six hundred bucks <laughs> in yeah. like the normal conversion. <laughs> yeah, uh, fifty gold pieces a gold, uh, fifty dollars a gold piece. Yeah, yeah, the uh, my tattoos were about that much. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit Mark, less. Than that. Mark's got some too, I think. <clears throat> Uh, I know he's got a thing on his arm. I've got scars from hockey. That's good enough for me. <clears throat> Alright, uh, we're going to take Akka to... And other scars I can't show you on stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I went, uh, <laughs> oh that, that, that very first surgery didn't go so well. <laughs> it went fine. I, I don't mind it. <laughs> it's not like I remember it. <laughs> Alright, to TMI, TMI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so where is the Shokunaka going? Akka go shows you his. He just tears off the bandage and shows you the tattoo. Shoka nods at his. Hmm. He appreciates it. Without word. Hmm. Okay, Akka travels ahead of you, pushing, making room through the crowds, pushing people out of the way for you. I love you, Aka. Mark, don't kill Aka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had so much potential. Uh, so we're off you, to you go. You pass by the Vatapol Civic Arena. Uh, there's nothing going on in the arena, although you do hear carpenters. Okay. Uh, like some are... hammering and that sort of thing. It kind of brings Ooh. you back to like, oh, are they building Ooh, are something? Are they building ships? Are they, uh, <laughs> what are they building it there? Uh, yeah, you don't see any big hulls of ships or anything like that kind of like like being brought into the arena. Um, what Whatever materials they needed have already been sent into there. And there are two guards near the front. Okay. Um, we're going to, I guess the sea gods, or fury people are probably going to be near the fingers, I guess. Uh, or the bay docks. 
thought we put these things on here. Man, did I not? Did it not save? <laughs> the map didn't save. Oh, that sucks. Or we did it on a different map. Oh, fuck. Uh, do you want to check to see if you loaded no, the right I, one? No, I, I, I know where I remember, because the house... The sea God. You know that there's a ramshackle set of buildings outside in the fingers that you have to go, that you have to okay. go to. Uh, it is middle of the day. Um, the the door the gates are open. The guards don't stop you. Uh, you could see that there are some ships along the uh, along the finger docks, um, and there there is a lot of material passing to and fro, including slaves and people. <clears throat> okay. Um, a lot of warehouses, but as you continue to travel, you can see that the towers of faith uh, are looming over the place. These are three uh, military towers that were converted into a kind of like a church of the five-faced god so there's a lot of banners of the five-faced god uh and weird lights in some of the uh the arrow slits um that's a, that just loom over this entire place it's, it's an impressive looking tower structure um but squatting in the shadows of this place you can see the house of the sea god's fury there is a caravel here that doesn't have uh any markings on it or at okay. least they've taken they've taken the markings down and you can see a lot of rough sorts kind of like bringing stuff onto the caravel from from this warehouse <sighs> just sort of stand out front awkwardly like somebody's gonna go okay. you don't belong here <laughs> yeah um you do see that there is a there is a small office but it seems more of an office that uh more to do with ships uh, there is a guy whipping very strong looking slaves that are carrying things move faster you you maggots Get moving, or you'll find yourselves in the civic arena. He seems like a man in charge. Some guy comes up to him and they're just talking and they're laughing about some guy. He seems to be whipping one one slave in particular a lot, which is causing him to work like less effectively, which is causing him to whip him more. This guy, oh, oh, they're laughing about some guy who's fallen down and dropped a box. Hello, you're alive. I see Ahmed attempting to connect. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm connected to Ahmed and I'm connected to Marty, so... Um, okay, he's going to reset his uh, machine. Okay. Uh, so Ashoka will stand a good ten feet back from Mr. Whippy Guy. Yep. What do you want? He turns well, around. He yeah, gets a bump for the guy who talked to I him. I received an invitation to speak with Sabros, or Sabros' representative. He's here to talk to Sabros. Or Sabros' you? representative. Some sort of gladiator? Looks like he crawled from the sea. <laughs> no, I am one of the masters of the Conclave of the Crimson Scale. The what? One of the new stables. Oh yeah, I hear the the kind of the one you know. <laughs> yes, we received your invitation. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you like that, eh? How you go in go in the front door? It it made for excellent eating. They're and still laughing, the and, they're ma and, and they're making uh, like, like donkey jokes as you, as you're going to the front door and making donkey noises. Um, <laughs> you go into the front door. Oh, this place is weird. It's got a purple carpet that runs down the center. There are these big bronze uh, uh, braziers with uh, with this spooky purple light. Uh, it's like you're entering a temple. <laughs> um, there is there is a door with with uh, there are heavy heavy. Um, gold trim uh dark tapestries along the wall the tapestries do depict like sea monsters like that, a weird mm. kraken a, a strange a strange looking um uh leviathan like thing attacking a ship 
um, a pirate ship on one surrounded by jellyfish, um, uh, sharks in the water. You can see people swimming away from sharks. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there is a inside. there is a bell, like just inside the door. Like there's like a ship's bell. Okay. Uh, You're not a divine caster. Okay. Yep. It's just a long hall that leads into this place. It, it doesn't go the entire length of this building. Okay. It's probably just in the front. So go to the end of the hall. Just... Okay. You go to the end of the hall. There's a thick oaken door. You pass by another tapestry that looks like it's a bunch of broken, um, like sea wheels, like broken ship wheels. Hmm. Um, Another tapestry aside from that looks like a bunch of like little fish, but the little fish have little reds in their mouths, like all the little fish could bite flesh. I don't, have, I don't know if you have knowledge nature. I've got knowledge and ability. <laughs> you could make an in check if you know want to know what a piranha is. Uh, six. No, you little blood little, mouth fish. Little, little blood mouth fish. Uh, all right. <laughs> Aka seems a little weirded out by this room. Like again, you're bringing him to all these wonderful places. He's looking at he's looking at the tapestries with great fascination, and then it's just a heavy door. Uh, the door um, is a double door. Okay, iron reinforced, heavy wooden door. Is there a knocker or something? Nope. Okay. Uh, smack the door. Okay. <laughs> What was that? I don't know, someone at the door? I didn't hear the bell. Oh, fuck's sake. Go over and ding the bell. <laughs> okay, the door, you can hear tumblers of the lock opening by the time you go over and you just point at the bell and Aka, Aka, Aka <laughs> pulls on the little rope and the bell, ding, ding! <laughs> and, the, and the door is open. There is a gloomy looking hall that continues beyond here, but it opens up into a larger space. Um, it has a a bunch of like depictions of similar of similar like animals not so much in scenes but like symbols along the floor um kind of at odd places it's a dark gloomy hall there is an altar that that is clearly visible at the far end of the hall uh and you can see some priests in billowous dark robes um that are just sort of lurking around in the shadows of this room um the braciers do not make this room well lit, like it is full of shadow. It, the, the smell of sea salt and something rot, like some sort of like rotting snail, assails you when the door is open. Like, and you're pretty sure that the big bowl of what looks like a tentacled hand coming up on the altar, surrounding a big stone basin. You're pretty sure that there's something rotting inside that basin, and maybe the seaweed or the tentacle of the thing that's rotting is kind of like looped over the edge. You're pretty sure that that's where the smell is coming from. These two young priests don't seem to be bothered by the smell, and they're... You rang the bell? Yes, I'm here to speak. I am Ashoka, and I am here to speak with Sabros, or a representative thereof. They look confused. One of the, the whipmasters sent you in here, didn't they? Yes. They shake their head like, like this is a thing that commonly happens. Sabros is not here. Do you have an appointment? I received an invitation. They look worried, like you've put them in an awkward situation. And, a, and, and they look more afraid of the voice that booms behind them <clears throat> than of you. That's, that's fine. And the voice behind them comes from a well-oiled, bald warrior of great stature. Um. Uh. <laughs> hey, Greasy, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, greasy boy. <laughs> Vatapol. What am I looking for? Vatapol gladiators and slaves, maybe? He stands close to seven feet tall. He's twice as wide 
as Magnus. He's wearing nothing but a, like a leather, like a leather war skirt, and some and some like strategic what look like bent uh, bronze or iron rods as jewelry. I, I need Brad Pitt to fight this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, you can talk to me. He says with a booming voice that seems to boom like like it's just hmm. too too powerful. Like he's got mutant lungs or something. The two priests sort of, like, like almost trying to, like, bend over and disappear into the shadows. And you notice that he's up by the, he's up by the, uh, hey Nick, how's it going? Uh, he's up by the, um, um, the big basin, wherever that rotting thing is, and he's just, he was just finishing stirring something inside of it. He dropped something out of a, out of a, out of his hand, like he was up near the altar adding things to the, to the basin. And then he... He, he's wiping his hands and he's starting to stride down. He then just stands in front of the basin and just lets you look at him. <laughs> okay, I will look at him. <laughs> okay. What do you want with Sea Lord Crixis? What do you want in the house of the sea gods? Greetings, Sea Lord Crixis. I have... I'm responding to an invitation that was from Savros. Uh, or perhaps from you. We are wondering where we stand. You stand in the house of the sea gods, and yet your feet are not wet. They are filled with sand. You are a snake of the land. And he is but an insect. There, you know your place in the world. Fuck off. Hmm. Um, and I'm going to roll. <laughs> I'm going to roll his intimidate check, and you're now shaken. I rolled a d1. Hmm. What? There's just something commanding about this man's vitae, aura, his complete annoyance at lesser people. His loins. Hmm. He turns around and reaches into a bucket and there's some sort of squirming <coughs> sea creature in his hands. It looks like some sort of jellyfish that he just brings over top of the front of the basin and squishes and it all runs down his hands and goes into the bucket or goes into the into the altar I suppose this is where I bid you good day sir unless you want to end up as offering no wait what what house are you Crimson Scale. Why do I know that name? Newly formed, once of the Crimson Sand. Oh, crimson Scale. Do you mean a red scale? Is that your flowery language, land-loving serpent? Similar to red, but more that of blood than of a flower. Yeah. You know where to find me. When you think yourself worthy of challenging a champion. I take it you are the primus of the sea gods. I'm the primus of anything I see. Anything before me. And anything that wanders into the waves, now go. I'm in the middle of prayer. <coughs> Interrupt me further, and I'll take out your entrails and mix them in. Does he have... The accoutrement of somebody who casts spells. Um, 
Yeah, give me a knowledge arcana. At a minus two because you're intimidated right now. <laughs> you're going, ooh. <laughs> <I'm scary." laughs> Raka wants to leave. Like he's actually tugging on your on your, on your like, belt. Like, 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 fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, I roll natural one. I get a four with minus two penalty. It's, it's like I don't it's know. It's too dark. Go. He's doing something. There's lots of things that are around the altar that could be spell components. Many of there are buckets where he's like picking up little sea beasts and throwing them into the horrible soup. The overwhelming smell of rotten snail and. Um, or rotten calamari and sea salt in this place. Uh, there's something that really frightens you about him. Well, it seems like a, a good time to sort of turn around and walk out of the building. And, All right, uh, so you meet the champion of their house, who, yep. appar- who apparently is willing, is, is allowed to receive visitors for their gladiator, Ludus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys go running out of there. The guys are making. The guys see the guys outside with the with the whip. See you guys kind of like scooting out, and they're making donkey noises at you again and laughing. Aka need or not Aka. Ashoka needs a moment to think. <laughs> okay, my, you guys move away from this. You guys, these guys gather gather a moment to think. You're no longer shaken although if you were npcs your <laughs> your well, yeah, relationship with them would be one step worse aka does not like aka is like like just giving you a look like this is not good his hand is on his weapon i oh, actually do you let him i guess he doesn't have a weapon um, i've got his weapons okay you should have all his weapons on your back like take him <laughs> We will see them in the ring. Um, I do not have to fight him, do I? No, not yet. No, no man can match him. I am big, he's twice my size. Fights happen in two phases. There is the actual act of combat, and then there's all the preparation. Something wrong in there. Holy temple. Something wrong. We should go. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! <laughs> Is it just whipping this one guy and looking at you? All right. Uh, so it's one of those... If there's the opportunity to fuck over those guys... <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> um, so, so the law, the is it? He's chaotic evil. Who? The guy you what's his name? Uh, Aka. Aka's chaotic evil. Yeah, the guy. He he walked out scared and saying something's wrong with that guy. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, Aka's neutral evil. Oh, well, oh, okay. the evil guy. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Ashoka, the lawful evil guy, walked out of there going. Oh, he must be really strong to maintain that shit of a personality. <laughs> also, I need to clean my robes. <laughs> you, 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 you say that, but have you met Snowbeard? <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, um, I, I, I need to take a phone call. Uh, I might not be back for a little bit. Uh, okay. I just got a text from... Mm. All right. This is this is before the beginning, uh, Ahmed uh, Mark. This is before the beginning yeah. of the um, of the be- of the season of gaming. It is kind of like the okay. end of winter, almost spring, uh, and you guys haven't met the other Ludi yet, or or uh, done two things, which was meet commissar. with the magister, a magister, or the commissar. So we'll um, go to the commissar first. Ashoka <coughs> has decided to go and meet the people that threw the diseased horse heads into your Ludus as a welcoming gift. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, I guess Phineas uh, gets antsy and Qued's, Qued's, Qued gets a little bit pushy. He's like, you really need to go and visit the, the Commissar and the Magister? <sighs> no, Hi. the Commissar is what we're doing. What we're we're doing? registering. Registering. And the Magister? Uh, we have to kind of register the fact we have a prisoner 
who has been sentenced to the gladiatorial arena. Oh, has, okay, yeah. right. Magister is prisoners. Commissar is registrations. Got it. Right. Do you require my assistance, or may I may I continue my work? Yes, you may continue whatever it is you do. I, you yeah, say. Magnus has got this. Me and this guy will do it all. Oh, no. <laughs> he glances yeah, towards look. Magnus. <laughs> he shirks away from Magnus's loud voice. Like it don't worry, him. don't worry. I'll let him do most of the talking. We'll carry the coin if we need it, yeah? Yes, yes. Traditionally, okay. it's not a bad idea to provide gifts to those whom you wish to have a wonderful working relationship. But do you know what he likes? Like what? Is he, is he, is he like food? Is he like horse? Man horse? What's he like? Give me a second. He, he goes over and he rolls the dice. <laughs> he rolls the dice. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, stream, how's it going? Sick um, returns. <laughs> let's see. Coming alive and trying to infect you all. I'm not certain what um, the Magister likes. But I'm sure you can buy your favor from the commissar. Okay, we give him we give him some gold. How much is enough? Like how much? Like please Magnus is not smart enough. Please what should I give? Please don't be crude enough to simply give him the gold. No, you, there must be him, some excuse. Give him something of value. There must be some excuse. Perhaps a birthday or a present. Um, you knew when you were born? In our case, we are celebrating the opening of our Ludus. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a good idea. Administrative fees. Hmm. Good luck with that. Uh, administration of the fees, yeah, that sounds good too. You are on, the holders of the purse strings of my master's investment <clears throat> in you. Agnes shows yes. all the confidence. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, come, Magnus, we shall go to the... Uh, let's go to the market. Um, just checking, we are not injured, we don't have anything. Can you prep some, some potions, just in case? Can you, hey... Okay, here's Phineas. something Here's something you know about Phineas. Phineas is never ready for a fight. Phineas, can you do something for me? We don't know this place yet, it's probably dangerous. Prepare some <laughs> of your, your drinks and, and we can, in case something happens, we are... We're ready, you know. What, why do you think this place is dangerous? It's surrounded by a wall. People walk about every day and aren't killed. Why do you think it's dangerous? <sighs> okay. It comes from a guy who spends his time, his, most of his time in the room. Magnus? The only reason it's dangerous is because maniacs like you run around with swords on their back. Magnus, you saw the, the heavy wooden door to Qued's <laughs> guest chambers. It's the only chambers in Ludus that you were told you're not allowed to go into. Um, as it was shutting, you noticed that Nem went scurrying into the room, and the door closed. I smile. <laughs> Fucking uh. Nem. <laughs> um, just a shout out to everybody new on the stream. What's going on? How you doing? Welcome. Ne Nem is the uh, is the maimed uh, imp that you guys took from the Imperial City that was spying on you guys. One winged imp. One winged imp who can't turn invisible for some reason. Um, he seems to have got gets a, he seems to get along with uh, uh, the Quaid. Quaid. Yep. Quaid. Huh. Might be as familiar. <laughs> we'll see what goes on. Okay. Um, Oh, Marty, I might have to step away for 20 minutes or so. My, one of my cats is sick and I have a vet coming, so... Yep, I don't know. Vet coming to your house? Yeah. Is it a friend? I got, I got, 
I got game going on right now. So, so I know Making the cats. It rain. <laughs> I'm just saying, I got game right now. I got priorities. Sorry, cat. I have to wait for that. <laughs> okay. Some some bonus XP right there. Yeah. <laughs> Vet coming to home is 100. 100. <laughs> sure, you get XP for showing up to the game, so. M meow meow no, XP. You know what? I'd be okay <laughs> with meow XP. Meow XP for you. <coughs> I, I would be okay with you getting extra XP for the vet coming to your house if you can convince the vet to roleplay a druid for the time it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I call upon the gods of nature to heal this little kitty. <laughs> I shall put. Something in some oh, what? Oh, he's late. Okay, that's fine. Um, All right. So Magnus and Phineas, uh, Phineas, are you bringing Nix with you to uh, to your meeting or not? Uh, yes. He well, he, he's kind of like a shitty cat owner who just like the cat goes in and out whenever it wants and just follows if it wants. He doesn't. Okay, so Nix Nix will follow you because it it doesn't want to be left alone in the Ludus, and <laughs> then um. Magnus, what weapons are you taking with you? Uh, Magnus is taking his... Uh... I'll just take... I'll take my... Uh, my uncle and my... Uh, my niece? Let me check again. I'll take my uncle and I think she's my niece. Okay. You're not bringing your big magical sword with you? Is that what you're saying? No, no, okay. no. We'll leave that. I assume my stuff is safe here, right? <laughs> your stuff is in your chambers. You have your. Place I'm taking my sword with me. Your place has <laughs> your place has guards. I don't know. You tell me. What's the rating of your uh, of your Ludus? You guys have yeah. spent some money in security, so yeah. There's like basic locks, and and you have uh, Magnus is taking the sword with him. Okay. Um, I'm still opening up that sheet, all right. <laughs> and then I, I think that you guys, um, <coughs> that you guys, um, like it's not crawling with thieves. You haven't had any uh, uh, any incidences uh, since you've right. been here, aside from the, the the heads being thrown over the wall and a bit of property destruction from the dragon. Um, so is far, that guy feeding the, is the commoner feeding the dragon still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He he basically <laughs> chucks food into the room, stands, it hops up onto a bench. The dragon that... breathes under the under the uh, um, <laughs> consult the spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, he, he jumps up he jumps up onto the onto a seat, and then the dragon breathes fire under the uh, under the doorway and just singes his uh, his feet a little bit. Um, but yes, uh, uh, Derm is still around. Um. Prentice, Penny, Prenti, Prentice Pennywise has been locked away in your dungeon, as I'm looking at the sheet as well. You spent quite a bit of money on your armory. You spent quite a bit of money on your crafting, barracks, and you've got a two in security as your rating for security. Yep. Um, okay. Um, oh, total I... four. You've got facility for security and personnel. So yeah, you've got <clears throat> decent Ooh. upgrades. Where is the link for the sheet? I asked um, this before and I couldn't find it before. Adam, just send me a link, but I don't look, know where it is. See where your character sheet is? Yeah. Where it says Conclave of Crimson Scales? Or Scale? Yeah. The link is in there. The combat oh, sheet is right above it. Would you look at that? Yeah. I was like, why don't we have it in here? Huh? Look at that. How did you win? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um,. Are you bringing anyone else with you? And then you said you were going to the markets. So how much money are you bringing with yourselves? You do have your own personal wealth, plus I believe forty-one talents left. Um, he's in this. From what he knows of Vanapool, with his three ranks, knowledge local, um, it is are there shops in the higher end districts that will just take? They'll send someone to collect the coin, so you don't have to carry it. <laughs> uh, talents are really easy to carry. They're like little, like little money bars, like uh, uh, little minted bars. Um, and they're accepted in the market. They would be accepted probably if you were spending more than a thousand gold pieces at a time. Yeah, he'll spend a thousand gold pieces okay. on the gift. Um, you're pretty sure you could arrange like we'll pay later, but you might not get the good up front. No, no, he wants the good for when he goes to visit. Got it. Okay. 
So so basically, oh, I want to know how much money are you are you carrying on your person? <coughs> oh, uh, he's um, he's carrying a talent. Okay, uh, I will. I will, I will subtract a talent. Magnus from, is carrying the talent. I will subtract a talent from your uh, from your spreadsheet. Add the talent to your character sheet, Magnus, as as you are going out. Uh, Out into the town. Where are you headed? Uh, with your knowledge local, you know that there are there are some markets that, that congregate around the Vatapol Civic Arena. The river market is where you get goods as they're just coming into the city. And the most exotic and uh, busy market, and where you're going to find some of the more magic uh, 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 sold, is in the market of the old gods. Um, we will go to the... The commissar is a fan of the games, so let's go to the. The commissar the, runs the games. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean he's a fan. Yeah. Where is there like a wealthy district? Uh, any, a anything on the market? heights? Yep. All right. Let's see if there's a is there a market on the heights? Yep. Uh, the market let's of the go. old gods. Market of the old gods is where we're going then. Okay. Um, you managed to. Take sort of a scenic route. You pass by a monastery called the Order of Divine Light. You can hear monks training inside. That looks hard. <laughs> he just keeps looking. Look, they're getting all sweaty. I don't know why you bother when you can just learn magic. There are more well-to-do homes uh, and businesses up here. You pass the Wolf's Den bathhouse. Okay. You can see a lot of... It's hard to tell who's got who's got the wealth or not. Um, uh, um. Oh, what happened there? What? Is somebody sharing? You need to stop. No. Um. No, I hit. There we go. It's right beside my minimalized butt. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Wolf's Den bathhouse, you can see, has like a symbol of like, uh, like, like two wolves fighting, um, kind of in a round circle. Like they're kind of oh, rearing yeah, up, rearing up to fight each other, and you can see a bunch of people in robes. <clears throat> it's hard to tell who's who or, or how rich they are because they're all wandering around in robes and and going into the bathhouse. Well, that looks peaceful. Dog fighting. Okay. <laughs> the market of the go the old gods is busy at this time of day. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're looking for something like in the realm of a statue, like a golden statue, gladiators fighting, or something like that. Okay. As you're wandering around the market, you manage to stumble into a place where there aren't a lot of people um, uh, like congregating. It's, it seems to be in the heart of the market, but for whatever reason, people haven't wandered into this very austere and ancient looking place. Uh, and I'm going to move your miniatures from... Uh, Is this a civic arena? Nope. No. no. Civic arena, where are we? A market of the old gods, but we... You're on Battlepole. Yeah. And you've wandered into the center of the market as you were looking around, and I'm going to force you guys to a new map. It's called okay. An Ancient Pantheon. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Cool map. That's, a, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to make the grid a little bit bigger. It's a really nice drawing, Marty. Good, good job. Sure. Um, <laughs> you notice that there are depictions of what look like some of the old gods in the center. Um, mm -hmm. and there's a bit of a pit in the center as well, some fallen pillars. It looks like this place may have been wonderfully, wonderfully beautiful. Some of the, some of the, uh, the statues ha do have cracks and have missing bits on them, um, but these are not statues of the five-faced god. Uh, these are statues of the old gods. Or perhaps heroes of old. Oh, a little bit of history. Is there a halfling anywhere? Brim hat, straw. 
No, you don't see a halfling anywhere? I don't know what you're making reference to. Well, let me. Let me. <laughs> oh, no. Let me is not a god. Yet. <laughs> oh, you guys are still trying to meta your way through <laughs> the two timelines of the two campaigns. I see what you do. I see what you do. No, there is no halfling god here. I.e. how much time has passed? Is that what you're trying to figure out? Yeah. Yeah. I will get it eventually. Bastards. All right. <laughs> now that's the right scale. Uh, you can go down there. Um, what are, what are the, the gods on your character sheets? Uh, no, oh. Freddy is a devout follower of the uh, Five-Face God, but he is uh, interested in history. So. Okay. Got it. So old, old people. Old people. No. Oh. Dead people, really, but yes. Magnus, you recognize a depiction of Cord, the god of strength. Yeah, Magnus goes and kneels to him. Okay, are you going to go down into the circle, or are you just kneeling from the outside? Oh, uh, so in the circle, are there people? Nope. Uh, there's like a busy marketplace all around this place, but it appears that people aren't wandering into this space for some reason. I see some guy walking by like, hey, you! <laughs> <laughs> this guy carrying uh it's a slave he's carrying a um a big basket on his head uh, <laughs> some guy is not gonna <laughs> okay <laughs> he, he looks at you turns with the big basket on his head yo why is nobody down there are we allowed to go down there old gods is what he says and he can continues to move oh, he's fucking useless this guy uh, hey you! <laughs> it says you go over this, this 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 old woman. She's she's got a couple of like dogs that she's taking for a walk. Magnus, no one goes down there because no one wants to be thought mistakenly to be worshiping the old god. Are you a gladiator? And these little dogs, are, these little poodles, hate Magnus, and they're like growling and barking at him while you're talking to her. Uh, nice, those nice kittens you have there. <laughs> They're not kittens. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a master. They're my master's dogs. I need to take them out for a walk, you see. Or they get very cranky. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. Uh, Good day right. to you. She says as she... Come on. And she, she, there's some like really, really flowery names for the dogs. Uh, I, Phineas, what's, uh, well, where to? Although, although I, I do keep an eye on Corden. Look for an area, the closest area to him from where I can move. Like, uh, yeah, so over. there's a staircase that you can kind of go down. It is not clear where the stair It looks like the top of the stairs will be on one side, uh, and then no, you can wander down. Magnus is not that stupid. Uh, this, this area is accessible. It's kind of a wall. You could stand on the edge of it. Like, there's a there's a wall that would come up to your to your waist. But yeah, you could just w wander up and, and look over at Cord. Okay. Um, Cord with his... no guards? With his, with his great cloak. No, there's no guards. <coughs> this is open, and the statues are in a bit of a depression. Um, perception? Are there any tracks down there? Sure. What kind of ground is this? Is it dirt or is it um, like is it dusty or is it like cleaned or? Uh, it looks like dirty flagstone. Uh, give me a perception check. All right. Ah, knush, ah, knush. I'm cheering myself. <laughs> All right, perception. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thirteen. Uh, yeah, you see, there's a place to walk down. Um, there are scuff marks in the stone. Um, I'll just put these as breaks. Does it look like there's any footprints at all, or...? 13, you can't really tell. It, it kind of okay. looks like there's okay. traffic, like there are well-worn worn paths in the stone. Like, many people okay. over long periods of time have gone through here, but not any specific gotcha. footprints. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm still going to eat him. No, you're not, says Phineas. No, you're not. Oh, Mark's not here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's start looking for possible gifts for this thing. It does look uh, like these are the old gods. 
Fascinating. Beautiful. I wonder why they're standing in a pit. Looks like they're fighting something. Maybe they're protecting, they're guarding something from coming out from the hole. Look at them. Hmm. Yes, the um, ancients were a curious people. I wonder who knows about this place. 